to my channel. My name is Christine and I'm happy to have you along with me as I start my July vlog. I'm going to give you some tentative plans like I always do. I kind of like to get the month started with what I plan on working on and uh, then it's always kind of fun to see that completely change by the end of the month. So let's start with what you're looking at right now. This will be my focus project for this month. Eagle's Majesty by Dimensions. I'm trying something new. I actually have a tripod set up and oh, it's going to be a little tricky because it doesn't all fit. But I thought that might uh, stabilize my, my viewing. Uh, it might stabilize my camera work a little bit. Um, so let's see. This is, where, uh, this, this is where I am at on this one right here. So I will keep this next to it so you can kind of see sort of the area that I'm in, I'm going to, uh, so I have some filling in I need to do around this area right here. And then I don't know if I'll come down into this area here, water, or more over into the water over there. We'll see. But this is going to be my main focus. I would love to get this done this month. Uh, it's going to be a stretch, but you know, sometimes I get on a roll with these things and I just go, go, go. Uh, I hate to sound like a broken record if you've followed me before, but I will refresh just in case you are new. This project of mine was started in 2011, so it's about this. Did I start it in 2011? I started it a long time ago, like 12 years ago. And then it was uh, put in the whip pile, and it is my officially my oldest whip. So I had sort of set a goal for myself to try to get this done. Well, before my son gets back from Ireland, my 19 year old is in Ireland and he's studying there for a semester and he's been there two weeks already. He's got four weeks left and I just told myself I was going to work on this while he was gone and try to get it done since it's my oldest whip. And it's sort of a um, metaphor for, you know, my son spreading his wings and flying out on his own on his first trip, his first trip really not just internationally, but his first trip anywhere ever. So it's been a big deal for our family. And I want to get this done before he comes back. Can I do it? Try to move this here just so you can kind of see that I have a lot of it done. Sorry, I'm not going to take it out of the hoop because I just put it in, but the eagle is all backstitched already. That eagle's backstitched. I even backstitched some of the rocks. So you know, all I have left to do is just that bottom corner, but it is a lot. It's a lot of stitching. I mean, it's definitely going to be a challenge to try to get it done. So we'll see. That is my goal, main focus goal for this month. And I have two other, at this moment, two other tentative plans that I want to do. So let me go and grab the next one and we'll talk about that. Okay, this next one is the finery of nature. And I do apologize. It does have some glare. I'm going to just try to get to minimize that glare, but it's hard. I mean, there's a window here, so uh, you can see it's a beautiful one. It's done on black Ada, 14 count Ada, and it's got all kinds of gold cording and couching throughout, and it's going to be so beautiful when it's done. I got a minimal start on that last month right up here in the corner. You can see right there, barely, just barely got a start on it. But I really, I was really enjoying it. I just had a lot of other things going on last month, so I didn't get back to it. I would like to get back to it. And I think that my tentative plan for this one is to get, I started right up in that corner there, and I would like to get one fourth of this done, this top left corner. That's what I would like. We shall see. Okay, and then I only have one other plan. Let me go ahead and grab it. Okay, and then I've got this Mill Hill Buttons and Beads kit called Aurora Borealis. And I am probably going to start that at some point this month. So I'll just kind of zoom in there. I know it's glary too. Uh, so there is a stitch along going on. It's being hosted by Kenny Stitches and Mama Bear Stitches called Kit and Caboodle Sal. And the premise of it is to start one kit a month for 12 months, so for a year. And it started yesterday, July 1st. Uh, did I say the date? Today is July 2nd, 2022. 
and yes, that sow started yesterday. And uh, some I didn't want to start this yesterday, but I am going to probably start it at some point this month. I don't know if I'll commit to all 12 months of the kitten caboodle sow, but I think I will pop in and out sort of as I get um, new stitches. I don't think I'm going to start anything big for it. I think I'm going to stick to just doing Mill Hill kits if I do, if I, if I do go ahead and participate in the kitten caboodle sow, because I have a lot of Mill Hill kits in my um, collection. So I would like to tackle some of those. What's fun about this is it comes with glow-in-the-dark beads. And actually, let me show you how cool they look. Okay, I just charged them in the sun. Can you see how they're glowing? Isn't that cool? Okay, that is all I have to get this vlog started. We shall see what I get done. Stay tuned, and I will check in just as soon as I have some progress to show you. All right, see you soon. Good afternoon, Stitchers. It's Thursday, July 7th, a week into my vlog, and I'm here to show you my progress. I am staying true to what I said I was going to do, and I have been monogamous with the eagle, stitching only on it, and I am so excited to show you what I've gotten done so far. Let me move it this way just a little bit. Okay, and uh, let me grab my pointer. If you remember from the last video, I had a little bit. I was finishing up over here in this water and I got all of that done. This is all complete, all the way down to here. And I was gonna continue down to the bottom corner and start working, you know, work my way down to the bottom left corner. And I decided I didn't. And the reason is, is because this, all of these symbols and this water and everything right here is almost exactly the same the same symbols this kind of the same type of stitching all in this area over here and this is one of those projects that i kind of have to get into the groove of working on this because when when i put this away for a while and then i go to pick it up i i just i don't know it's hard to explain it takes me a while to kind of get in the groove and start feeling this project so that being said, I thought since I'm in the groove of, I recognize there's about six to eight different symbols in this area here, and it's the exact same symbols, kind of doing the exact same thing over here, just more of the same. And at first I was mind bogglingly bored with that section. And I thought, oh my gosh, I just don't think I can just stay working on this project. But then it just happened. I found my groove and I was really enjoying it and I thought I would continue over there. So I'm doing the same. I'm sort of color completing the uh, yeah, one color at a time. So I think I'm about working on maybe the fourth color. So, and then there'll be two, two others after. And it's blends all half cross stitch though. So it goes really fast. Um, let me see if you can see a little better. I don't know, you can't. This front camera doesn't have a real good focus on it, so. Uh, you can't see the detail, but there's actually some shimmer there. And in the next clip, I will do an, a close-up view of this area when I get it all done. So, so yes, it's the seventh today. So I've worked on this. I didn't work on it July first, but I worked on it from July second until today. And I've given this this pretty much my sole attention, and I have stitched on it every day. Plus, we had Fourth of July weekend in there, which was a three-day holiday, and I got a lot of extra stitching. So. Yeah, I, got, I kinda got a lot done with that. Um, but I'm gonna continue on working with this and I probably won't give an update until I get all of the water done and then I think I'm gonna move over and do the rocks. So let me uh, get the preview again just so you can see. Mm, let's see, it's in here. Okay. Let me grab this again so you can see next to it. There, so. Uh, how to best how to best hold this okay so I'm working on this area right there and then you can see I still have a lot to do down from here on down when I'm done and plus the rocks over there so have a lot left to do but it it does go fast because it's half cross stitches I think it's the only thing that's that's full cross stitches are uh, 
the rock area and they might even have some half cross stitches too. So, yep, moving right along on this and I feel like I don't have much else to talk about because I'm only working on one project. I haven't compared to last month when I was kind of starting all the things and working on all the mill hills. I just don't have a lot to talk about so far this month. So I will, I did want to mention one thing you never hear me talk about on my channel are books. It's not because I don't like books. I just, I, I'm not a reader. I just don't read all that much. So my son, Riley, my younger son, we were on a walk the other day and the clouds were looming over like a thunderstorm coming in. And I told him that it was, uh, it was, I just love these kind of days because they're good for sitting and stitching. And, and he said, oh yeah, I really feel like reading a book. He's like, we should go to the library later. And so that's what we were going to do. And then uh, we were walking a little farther and we came across uh, the little libraries. Now, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's probably a thing that other states have. You'll have to let me know. But we have them all over our neighborhood. So there are these little, uh, I'm sure you've probably heard of them. But in case you haven't, okay. In case you don't live in the United States. It's interesting. As a matter of fact, I will take a video the next time we're out and about because along our biking path, we have quite a few of these. So they're little, almost like little, uh, they look like little wooden houses with a little glass door on them. And people from the neighborhood just put free books in them. And they're just called a little library. And you can just walk, walk up to them and grab books. And it's kind of like take one, lead one kind of thing, you know? So uh, we were just walking by one day and uh, my son opened it up and we started looking for some books in there and he found this one. The Amityville Horror is like, oh, you have to read that. And surprisingly enough, he, he wasn't really all that familiar with the Amityville Horror. So, you know, it's kind of like one of those things you think everybody knows about that. Um, I've personally never read the book, but my son, I, um, I've seen the movie many, many times. I haven't seen it for years. And I told him he should read this book because it's scary. And he said, I don't know how a book could be scary. So anyway, he started reading it. And uh, yeah, he was about into um, maybe chapter three or four. And he said, yeah, it's, it's, it's got kind of a creepy vibe to it. So I got intrigued and said, you know what, I'm going to get the audio book and listen to it. And then we'll have a little mini book club. So he's reading the actual book and I'm listening to the audio book. And it's kind of fun. I remembered a lot about it, actually, the whole 315 and the get out, and yes, all the, <laughs> the scary stuff, the flies in the window. Yeah, so we're definitely going to have to watch the movie after we read the book and discuss. Okay, I'm getting a bit rambly. Uh, that's all I have to talk about. Yeah, it's getting a bit cloudy and overcast out there now, too, so I'm going to go get my uh, stitching, and I'm going to work a little bit on the eagle. And I'll check in when I have the waterfall done. I hope you're all having a good stitch day. I'll check in soon. Bye. It's me again. Um, before I end this clip, since you're seeing my face right here, I did want to talk about one other thing that I am really excited about that's going to happen this month. I had decided after thinking about for maybe thinking about it for about two or three years, who knows, maybe even four, I'm going to get Invisalign. Yes, I'm going to get my teeth straightened. So let's talk teeth here. In, in, just for a minute. So if you're not familiar with Invisalign, those are the teeth straightening uh, mouthpieces that you wear. They're clear and you wear them, I think you wear them 24 seven, except for when you eat. So they do make you, you kind of have to adjust the way you talk. I think they take a little bit of getting used to and I might talk like I've kind of got like mouth guards in my mouth. I don't really know how well I'm going to be able to talk with those, but um, I think I'm gonna probably need to wear them for about a year. So I don't need a lot of work done, but you can see I have some a little, 
a little bit of crowding down in front there that's getting worse over time. I can tell that my teeth are starting to get a little bit more misaligned down there. And I have one tooth right up here that's twisted about 45 degrees. So it's just those few things have caused my bite to be off. And because my bite's off, it's been giving me a lot of jaw problems over the years. I have like what's called TMJ syndrome and I like popping and clicking and a lot of pain in my jaw. Anyway, I have decided to go ahead with the Invisalign and I think uh, probably the deciding factor was that we do have pretty good dental insurance and it does cover a good portion of that. So I thought it's now or never, I just need to go ahead and do it. So um, July 19th, I'm gonna go get fitted for those and then um, yeah, you, you'll hear me talk a little bit different after that. So all right, I just thought I'd mention that and I'll see you soon. Okay, let's talk a little bit about blending filament. This is the filament that came in my dimensions kit that I'm working on, and it probably comes in many of them. And it's pretty. It's very shimmery. Can you see that? Almost has a very slippery texture to it. So this blending filament that is also lovingly referred to by many stitchers as the devil's fiber. And for good reason, because it's kind of like uh, wrestling with Satan himself when you're trying to stitch with this. So I need to use that now. Okay, there's different um, replacements you can make, substitutions, I should say, in kits, uh, Petite Treasure Braid and Krynik, and there's different things you can use. But I'm just uh, decided I'm going to just use what came in the kit because it's here and I have some. So what it calls for in this particular kit is an overlay stitch. What you're supposed to do is stitch four strands of white and then go back over it with two strands of blending filament on top. And that's what I've done. And you can't really see, I've done it in this little bit of area here and a little bit of area here. So it's gonna just kind of give some shimmer. It looks like I've done some up here too. So it gives shimmer in the waterfall. Can't capture it, I don't think. Um, I thought maybe being outside would help. The sun really washed it out. You can kind of see a little bit of, of shimmer in it there. But it's very subtle. I've had to put some over here too. Very subtle. So um, what I've just been doing is uh, a tip that I've learned way back and I don't know where when um, because so the reason it's so difficult to stitch with this is because if you look at the ends of it right here let me find can you see on the ends here how it gets it kind of frays see that it, it just sort of, yeah, like look at right here. See how it kind of just falls apart and becomes like almost nothing. And it does that after a pretty short amount of time after starting to stitch with it. You know, it's almost like a Christmas tree tinsel. And then it just frays. So a tip that I learned, and let me go ahead and get a needle loaded up so I can show you. Okay, so I got it loaded up. So what you do is you just thread your needle and then you do like a half square knot you know like almost like you're gonna tie your shoe and I'm doing this one-handed here can you see on the tip of the needle there I just tied a half square knot and what that does is it keeps the little shorter end it it kind of stops the fraying right there now it's also very wise to use very short lengths of floss. Now this is doubled over and this is kind of long. This is a long strand. I'd probably probably recommend using just half that length, but if you stitch really slowly and really carefully, you can use a little bit longer lengths. But if you want to save yourself some frustration, it's better to just thread your needle more often and use shorter lengths. So I'll just give you a little sample of um, me stitching with it.
Good morning, my friends. It is Friday, July 15th, and it's time for a progress report. And I am excited to report that I have completed the waterfall. And I am so excited to be done with stitching those particular colors at the moment. I have a bit more to do down in this area here, which I will revisit again after I take a break and stitch some browns. So my plan is to move the hoop over and start stitching in this area over here. Then I think what I may do is just move on down and depending how I feel about browns by the time I'm done with that, I may well, maybe, maybe start working in this area over here or I may move the hoop and start in this corner and start to move this direction. I don't know. We shall see where the needle takes me when the time comes. But this did kind of seem like a little mini finish here because it's, yeah, it's, it's almost kind of like what I have left. There's, you know, there was this section and then this section, this section that all can kind of seem like mini finishes and then this final one. And then at the end, uh, if I zoom in there, do you see all those little white speckles? Those are all French knots. So those will all need to be done at the end which now that I know how to do French knots and have done many of them, I don't really mind that. It's actually going to be the part I save for the end and it'll be fun to finish off this project with all those little French knots, all those little French knot water splatters. It's not picking up the shine and the shimmer, but there is blending filament all throughout this area right here and this area here, pretty much everywhere that you see the color white in here will have some blending filament, filament, and it looks really pretty when you uh, see it live. It's just really hard to get the camera to pick it up. Okay, uh, yep, so I will be moving the hoop here just as soon as I'm done filming this, and then today is also a very special day because my youngest, Riley, he turns 18 today, so as soon as he wakes up I'm going to take him to pick out some donuts and a birthday balloon because we always give them a birthday balloon on their birthdays. And uh, then he has a bunch of uh, birthday shenanigans planned with his friends this weekend. And I'm planning on getting a lot of stitching done because I don't think I have a whole lot going on uh, besides that. So this is going to be my weekend. I need to make some headway and make some good progress because my son will be home in two weeks. Can I do it? Can I get this all of this done in two weeks? So this is all probably going to be a lot of half cross stitches here, but I know that these two areas here have more full cross stitches, blends, and back stitching. So it's going to be tight. It is going to be tight. We shall see. I have been tempted to put a few stitches into Aurora Borealis and get that started. But I don't know, I think I'm going to stay strong, resist the temptation. I may sort the floss just to kind of get it ready, but yeah, I, I really shouldn't uh, divert myself from this. Can you tell I'm giving myself, I'm trying to talk myself into not starting it. We'll see how successful I am. Stay tuned. All right, everybody, happy Friday, and I will check in soon. Good morning. I'm just sitting out here in my yard on the morning of Tuesday, July 19th, and it's fairly quiet right now, so I thought I would go ahead and record this little video before the noise of the neighborhood starts uh, waking up. Uh, I wanted to show you what I started, <laughs> what I ended up starting over the weekend. I think I started this on 
probably Sunday. Yes, I started it on Sunday and I worked on it. Uh, I, I just decided to take a break from my eagle for Sunday and I worked on this instead. And I got uh, probably a couple of lengths of two or three lengths of thread uh, done in the, the navy blue and a couple in the teal and purple. And then so, and then I started a little bit in on the tip of the tree right there that you can see. And yeah, I just kind of felt like uh, just doing some easy block stitching and this was perfect for that. Now the pattern calls for three strands of this dark blue, which I didn't do. I just never do three strands on my Mill Hill kits. That's just a personal preference. I like to do the loop start, but you can tell that it's not as nice of coverage as it would have been if I used three. So personal preference there if you decide to do this kit. I believe that they ask for call for three threads with the black and this navy blue, just the darkest colors, because this perforated paper is, um, I don't know how well it's showing, but it's sort of a periwinkle color. So the, the dark colors would actually look a little bit better if you use three strands, but I just made the choice not to, and uh, I'm okay with that. So yeah, I worked on this on Sunday. Uh, and it was just nice. It was a nice break from the eagle. And really wanted to start something for the kit and caboodle sow. Did I mention that earlier in the video? Hosted by uh, Kenny Stitches and Mama Bear Stitches or Mama Bear Stitchery. I'll link them below, but it's a where you start one kit a month for 12 months. I don't know if I'll participate in that every month, but uh, I'm going to try. So I wanted to get this started so that I could. Uh, fit this in for my July start. So once again, that's what it's going to look like with the glow-in-the-dark beads. And I was thinking, do you know how sometimes Mill Hill, uh, some of their, I don't know if they do it as much with their newer kits, but some of their older kits, they sort of display it. Um, oops, I'm getting my magnet my needle minder sticking to my scissors, but sometimes they'll like, oh, the sailboat, like the, they'll have like the seaside sampler and then off to the side they show that you can do the little sailboat as the small ornament and kind of attach it to the frame as a coordinating sort of three-dimensional display. And I was thinking how cute this would look if I finished this little camper trailer and after it's done and framed, I can, you know, put a little camper trailer right here to kind of give an image that you're camping under the Northern Lights. I thought that was a really cute idea, so I, I would like to start this at some point. Don't know when I'm going to fit that in, because as you know, my eagle is my priority right now, but I did think that that was kind of a cute idea to display those two together. Um, I don't know if I, maybe I'll show you my progress I made this weekend on my eagle. Let me grab it. Okay, so this is the stitching that I did over the weekend. I didn't do too much stitching yesterday. Gosh, did I do any? Oh, yeah, I did a little bit yesterday morning, but for the most part, this was my weekend stitching. So I filled in all the rest of the areas up there, and then I color completed here, and what you see here are all the symbols that weren't blended. And I think I had said earlier, too, in an earlier clip, that there was gonna be some half cross stitches, and there's not. This is all full cross stitch in the rocks. And there was, it looks like there was three or four symbols that were um, not blended. So I went ahead and did all those. And then what you see left are, I think, a total of about three symbols that are blended. Three or four symbols that are blended. This is one of them right here. And there's not very much of that color. But the majority of this is like two or three different blended colors. So I'm going to try to shoot for getting one color a day done, completed. So this is going faster. And then, of course, I have to backstitch it. But that went to, it went a little bit quicker than I had anticipated it going. So, yes, like I said, that kind of gave me a little bit of um, sort of a feeling that I had some padding that I could start something new. Okay, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of stitching right now, but then I have a busy day. I actually go to the dentist today to get fitted for my Invisalign. So, yeah. I'll let you know how that goes. And right now, I'm going to start stitching and enjoy this beautiful morning in my yard, listening to the birds and the squirrels. 
All right, I'm sitting in the parking lot of my dentist getting ready to go in. I'm about 10 minutes early, so I thought I would just check in really quick and uh, let you know that I'm really excited to go in there and get this done, and I'll check in with you. It's gonna take about an hour and a half, and I'll just do a quick check-in and <laughs> show you how I look with my Invisalign on. Okay, see you soon, here I go. Okay, I'm back and I have my Invisalign liners in. They're just these clear little mouth guards, mouth, like mouth pieces that you put on top and bottom, and they're really thin. I thought they were gonna be a lot thicker and harder to talk with, but I am I think I'm already talking pretty well with them. The S's are a little bit hard to, to say, kind of gives me a little, little bit of a lisp when I say my S's, but other than that, they're really easy to get used to. They're just, you know, like I said, they're really thin. Uh, it took about an hour and a half because they put all of these um, like notches they have to glue onto your teeth and that's kind of what the mouth guard hooks to. So that took a while because they had to keep my mouth open for a really long time and my jaw is killing me. But other than that, it, it was pretty easy. Okay, <laughs> I'll talk to you soon with a, with a stitching update next time, I promise. Okay, bye. Good morning. It is Sunday, July 24th, and I'm sitting out in my yard enjoying a lovely morning. We had a lot of rain last night, and there's just a cool breeze. It's just wonderful. And it's time for a stitching update. I'm very excited to show you that I got all of the rocks over here, which I was thinking these were all rocks, but uh, I think that's a log. I'm excited to get the hoop moved and to start working in some of the water down here. The next set of rocks kind of starts in this section here and there's about 60 or so stitches before I get down to the bottom right corner. So, but I, I'm really feeling like working in the water right now, so I think that's what I'll do. But I wanted to check in first and give you a glance at this before I move the hoop to a different location. Alright, I'll check in soon. I hope that you're having a wonderful stitching day. I've got one more week left to work on this, and the, uh, the, the more I work on it, the more I realize that it's probably not going to get done in July. So my son comes home Friday, which is the 29th. I'm sure I won't have it done by then, but then I have Saturday and Sunday left in July that I could potentially get it done, but I don't know. It's not that big of a deal if I don't get it done. I was just, you know, part of me wanted to just check off that box and say, I got this done in July, but, and, and then work on a, focus on another project for all of August. But I have a feeling this is going to go into August a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I may just, but uh, my, my needles might just be on fire this week and I'll get it done. Okay, I'll check in and um, check in soon. Bye for now. And here we are, the morning of Friday, July 29th. And my son is currently on his flight from Dublin to Charlotte, North Carolina. He's going to be landing there. So it's about 11 a.m. our time. And he's going to be uh, landing in Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina in a couple of hours. And then he'll be on his flight to Denver. And we'll be picking him up at the airport around 7 p.m. tonight. So as you can see, I will not have this done by the time he gets home, but that's okay. I made huge progress and I am extremely thrilled with how much I got done. I, I just underestimated how much needed to be done on this when I set the goal. And uh, once I realized sometime a few days ago that I was not going to get this done in the time frame I had set forth to do it, uh, then I kind of really slowed down this week. There were a couple nights I didn't even stitch at all and uh, it's not so much that I've reached burnout on this, it's more just like, hey, I don't need to bust my butt anymore <laughs> trying to get it done because it's going to now extend into August. I uh, debated whether I was going to put it away, but you know what? It's kind of like that one time when I ran a marathon and you learn that, you know, you hit a wall at the 20 mile mark and you really want to quit, but you don't. You push through. And I kind of feel with this project right now, I'm at the I'm at the 20 mile wall right now. And it's it's do or die. I just finish this, I just push I just push through and finish this, or if I put it in my whip pile again, 
who knows how long it'll stay there. So um, I did in this area here. I thought it was going to go fast, but didn't I? I still have a lot of stitching left, but I did get the, you can't tell, but I did do the blending filament and the surrounding color around it so that that's all done. And there's only one symbol that left that's a blend and then the other three, I think there's three symbols, these three different shades of dark teal down here that fill in the rest. So, you know, once I, once I go, once I have some actual time to sit down and do some serious stitching, that'll go pretty fast. But then we have the whole big part of left over here that's the rocks. And you know what? Like I had said earlier, this part up here took me a whole week just to do it, and this is a bigger area. So, you know, I mean, realistically, I probably could work on this all through August and and get it done then. But so I'm torn. I was just going to talk a little bit about uh, going into my plans for August. But you know what? I think I'll save that. Um, I'll save that for my very final clip because I'll only have one more clip to show you after this because it is the 29th and I still have the 30th and the 31st left to work on this. So it's not the end of July yet. And it is a weekend. So I do expect to get some stitching done, but I wanted to show you that this is how far I got. I would love to take it out of the hoop for you, but I don't feel like wrestling getting it back in. So this is, you're just going to have to use your imagination and realize that, yes, I, I got very close, but not, not, uh, not, as far as I wanted to and I won't stitch too much today I probably won't stitch till tonight so this pretty much is how it's going to be and I will check in one more time with a final you know hmm I started thinking maybe I should just extend my blog out my blog I should say until I get this done that way those of you that have sat through this will actually get to see a, um, a finish at the end should I do that? I don't know. Let's, let's see where I'm at at the end of the weekend, and then I'll make that decision. If I'm really close, I might go ahead and extend it. If not, um, I'll just tack the, the finish on to August's blog. Okay, I'll think about that, and I will check in soon. Have a happy Friday. I am so excited to see my son. I forgot what he looks like. As you can see from that last clip, my son has made it safely home from his international excursion. We're so happy to have him back, and he had a fantastic time. And of the myriad of souvenirs he brought back, he brought back these cookies called Jaffa Cakes, and he thought we would like them, and he was right. These things are so amazing. As far as I know, I, mean, I know you don't get these in Colorado, but I don't know if these are just an Ireland thing or over in all, all over in the you know European thing I don't know but these cookies are so good this is what they look like in case you're like me and I've never seen them before there are these cookie that have so I'm not going to open this package up because uh, they uh, they're fresh they're like this little sponge cake kind of this weird consistency of sponge cake. I'll see if I can find a picture online, but they have a little chocolate coating on the top, and then there's just an ever so thin layer of jelly in them, and they are so good. So he got us the orange. This one is like orange, so it's almost like a chocolate orange flavor, and then the other one is cherry. But uh, yeah, these aren't going to last long, I can tell you that. They are tasty. Okay, I just remembered that the box of cherry ones uh, were already open, and so I went and cut one in half and can show you that. Can you see how there's it's like chocolate with this spongy kind of cookie, and then you can see a little bit of cherry jelly right there. Oh my gosh, these things are so good. Well, July is officially over. It is now August 1st, and I was able to finish up all the water over the weekend which I'm very happy about. And all I have left now in this, with this, is this rocky corner right down here at the bottom. And I was looking at the chart and it's, it's actually 
quite robust. There's a probably over 3,000 stitches. So, and they're not half cross stitches. So this is, at first I was thinking I can maybe do this in a week, but I don't think so. I think it's going to probably take me two. <laughs> Especially because I don't have a lot of stitching time this week. So I am going to um, work on that and try to get it done as quickly as possible, but I am going to delay my vlog, like I had said in a previous clip, so that you can see the finish of this project in this same vlog that you've watched me kind of push through and get a lot done. I think that will be very satisfying to be able to actually see a finish instead of making you wait until next month's vlog. Um, I do have all of the French knots still to do. I was going to do them while I had it sort of set up in the hoop right now, but then I'm afraid when I move it over that they'll get crushed in the side of my hoop when I move it. So I think I will wait until the very end to do the French knots. And yeah. Okay, well, I guess I will probably just... I'm not going to update as I go along. I'm just going to update you when I have this to get done. So whenever that is, the next time you see this clip, you will see a finish. All washed and pressed and in all its glory. And that's when I, I will have it out of the hoop and give you the big reveal. Okay, so all right, here I go. And I'll see you probably in a week or two, I'm guessing. I definitely want to have this done by mid-August, and if I get it done before then, then that's a bonus. Okay, see you soon! Okay, this is it guys, the very last stitch. Ta-da! Happy World Cross Stitch Day, and I'm so excited to have an actual finish on World Cross Stitch Day. Don't know if I'll start something new today or not, but uh, I could have finished this yesterday on August 11th because I had um, I was working on the French knots at pretty late in the evening, and I wanted to record my last few stitches, so I was going to wait until this morning to do it but the stroke of midnight hit and as you can see from that last clip that uh, that previous clip that I had to just do my last stitches right there right after midnight of um, on the day of world cross stitching day and then of course I had to throw it in the wash and <laughs> get it washed up and as I expected it was extremely skewed like I knew it was going to be because well Okay, hold on, let me let this plane fly by. Okay, so with the Dimensions kits, they, they always, okay, first of all, I started this, you know, back in 2011, so it's crazy to think. I remember starting this part when my boys, when my husband was building a clubhouse for my boys, and they were, it was like the spring of 2011, so they were, I think, what, six and eight years old? I mean, my boys now, this summer, are turning, Riley just turned 18, Hunter's going to turn 20 in a few days, so... 
I mean, this whip has been in my stash for a really long time. It's so weird. I just remember working on this when they were like so young. So with the dimensions kits, when it has open space like this, the only part of this that's not stitched is this sky back here a little bit. So when you have open sky and half cross stitch, and then all of a sudden you have this really dense full cross stitch piece part, you know, and this being full cross stitch intermixed with half cross stitches, and then it gets very full coverage all the way down here. Um, if your tension isn't like spot on, and I think the half cross stitching you need to do the continental method, um, which I won't go into that right now, but anyway, there's a way that you can stitch to keep your project from being skewed. Now, when I stitched Butterfly Forest, it, it was extremely skewed when I was done. I mean, the whole thing just wanted to like be on the diagonal. And this one, when I took it off and washed it last night, it, it wasn't as bad, but it definitely um, wanted to kind of skew to, you know, hard to explain without, I can't really show you with both hands, but, you know, just kind of, and so I have this board. It's just like this quilter's, oh, here comes another plane. Gee, we must be uh, under a flight path this morning. Okay, so like I was saying, I buy these. Uh, it's this padded quilter's kind of a mat. It has like the cutting mat on one side and then this mat on the other. And it has this these grid lines. So what I did after I washed it last night is I uh, turned it upside down and I'll insert a picture. I put pins in the side to, you know, kind of like these little, these little, uh, I don't know if those are dressmaker pins or whatever. Um, the, uh, I, I just kind of pulled it into shape as best I could. And it, it turned out okay. So the picture you'll see, it's it was upside down last night. And then when I woke up this morning, I, I still kind of pressed it. And yeah, it, for the most part, it's very, it looks much better. <laughs> so I'm happy to see that with a little bit of stretching, you know, uh, when I frame it, it'll, it'll be nice. Um, you can also see I have very little fabric to work with on the edges. And that's because when I started this in 2011, I put masking tape on the edges. And it's not really wise to do that, especially if you're going to keep it on for years and years and years. So you can see that, uh, you can see that, you know, when I took the masking tape off, I, it had like a dark residue around the edges. And then I sewed fabric, the brown fabric that you always see on this. I had that on there just so that I could put it in the hoop and have something to work with. So by the time I cut off all of the, the grime and everything from the masking tape, it just didn't leave much. But that's okay because when I frame this, I'm going to probably frame it just right up, you know, put the, the mat right up to it like that. So I think I could work with that. And I'm going to try to frame it myself. Either that or I can turn it. I was going to turn it into a big cushion, but I don't know. It's just kind of big and rectangular. So I don't know how that will look. So I'll probably have to frame it. Um, but yeah, that's... That is it. It is so weird to not have this to work on anymore. I mean, I finished lots of dimensions kits, but there's just something really satisfying about a project that's been in the whip pile for so long. So yeah, you can see I had all these French knots to do last night. Uh, at first I was like, oh, there's not that many. I thought it was only these. And then, and then I'm like, oh no, there's more. And then I thought I was done. I'm like, oh no, there's all these too. <laughs> so took about an hour. I was just uh, watching Pride and Prejudice and doing French knots. So, all right. Um, I think I'm going to end this vlog here and go ahead and try to get it uploaded for you for World Cross Stitch Day and uh, so that you can all enjoy this right there along with me. And um, since it's the middle of August, I'll probably do another vlog that uh, just from mid-August to the end of August. So you'll see me again at the end of August and see what I work on because I have absolutely no clue what I'm going to work on after I stop recording this. And I'm just going to give you a close-up. Yes, you're going to probably find some missed stitches and some sloppy stitches because I am a much better cross-stitcher now than I was when I started this project. And even that being said, the part I just did... Uh, You'll probably see some missed stitches because I seem to always have them, but try not to judge too harshly and just enjoy my project because I am super excited.
Well, if you made it all the way to the end of this long video, I have a treat for you. I am going to give away a copy of the, a kit, not a copy, a kit of uh, Aurora Borealis by Mill Hill in honor of World Cross Stitching Day. I'm gonna open this giveaway up to everybody. So just be 18 years or older and please don't use the word giveaway in your comment. And all you have to do to enter is use the words, two words, Northern Lights because that's easier to spell than Aurora Borealis. So let's do Northern Lights and uh, just leave that in your comment because that's what I'm gonna use to search the comment picker. I think I'll let this, I think I'll let this giveaway run through the weekend since it is for World Cross Stitch Day. I'm not gonna extend it too long. So I'll pick a, a winner sometime on Monday probably. And good luck to everybody and happy stitching. I'll see you at the end of August.